Welcome back to the Total Focus Podcast. I'm your host, Paul. Our sponsor of the week is Mid-Atlantic Video and Photography Productions. No matter if you need photos or video, Mid-Atlantic Video and Photography Productions is the team to get the job done. No matter if you need professional headshots, pageant headshots, or even just a great event, Mid-Atlantic Video and Photography Productions is the team to get your photos taken care of. And if you have a video project, like a commercial, a wedding, or a special event, Mid-Atlantic Video and Photography Productions is the go-to place to get your video projects. So when you're thinking about photos or videos, make sure you reach out to Mid-Atlantic Video and Photography Productions for your next photo or video project. Our special guest this week is Najina Jerome. She is most notably known for finishing first runner-up at Miss Virginia with multiple state titles in New York and Virginia. What I think is incredible about her is that her innate ability to continue to work hard and to be diverse and well-spoken and build the skills to be behind and in front of the camera. And as you'll learn in this interview, her whole life is built up about achieving her goal as being an actor slash reporter. And it's evidence that all of her hard work has paid off and that the pageant work she put in has put her in a situation where she will definitely win her title no matter if it's going to be Miss DC or Miss Virginia so we are 100% excited for her and it's one of the reasons why I wanted to bring her on because the title doesn't define who you are you have to be that incredible person from the get-go so I hope all of my listeners stay tuned for this incredible interview And welcome to the show. Hi, this is Nadina. Glad to be here. Well, it's always great to have more of my DC um, title holder uh, class of friends. And I know that you've been really working really hard to finally achieve this this goal. And uh, I always want to bring on people that are still extend, uh, going for it because it's always a good perspective because... People that are on the top, they have that perspective, but there's a lot of people that have been competing for a long time and they look, they still look up to you because they see that you've been doing really well, but you just haven't gotten that, that, that crown. And I don't think that necessarily defeats anything that you've done. You know, the crown is just a, it's just an object, you know, getting, yeah, getting first runner up at uh, Miss, uh, Miss, Miss Virginia um, is it, still a really um, big achievement. So, and uh, <clears throat> so I guess the, the question I always start with is how does pageantry play a role while you start your whole life? Like in high school, middle school, are you doing pageants or are you more having a talent or you – uh, an athlete or are you dancing so i'm definitely not an athlete um, i'm not athletic uh but for me i actually did my first pageant when i was 10 years old um and i don't know what it was my love of pageantry actually began when i think i was about maybe maybe about the same time i think i was about 10 almost 11 years old and I remember watching Miss USA. That was the year Tara Connor won. I believe it was 2006. And I immediately I remember I was just flipping through my, my TV and I just saw this pageant on TV and I was immediately drawn into the confidence and the composure. And it was the story behind all these strong women. And for me, it was not even the beauty. It was just the fact that these women really showcase just this type of energy that I'm a woman, I'm beautiful on the inside, but I'm also... I'm beautiful on the outside, but I'm also smart, educated, driven. And those are qualities that I really wanted, especially as a young girl. 
So when I found a pageant in my area, I, I was it was back in the day before we had, you know, the emails and uh, social media, but I just got a postcard in the mail for a local pageant and I begged my mother to let me do it. Like, you know how people say, like, oh, your mom pushed you to do it? No, my mom was very anti-pageant. My, my mom was not a pageant mom, but I think she could just tell that I was very driven. So I did the pageant and now, I didn't know what was I was that, doing. Was that system because a lot of our, our past guests got letters or or postcards from igm was that igm no it was a it was i think it was a random i don't even remember what it's called it was a small local pageant okay so they just happened they just happened to hit the right person and they and they and they got the right the right person to to make the phone call well that was awesome yeah i I I lost (laughs) so so i i before we go on because it's always critical because there's this ongoing debate right now is uh if that TV broadcast wasn't on television, do you think you're still in pageantry to this day? Does that build that? Or do you think you would naturally have found it over the course of your life? I think I would have naturally found it because now I work in media and many people who work in media have a pageantry background. So it, it would have found me eventually. But I think as a young girl when you are growing up in a society where people are always telling you who to be and, 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 and you have so many mediums in your face, I think watching the pageant on TV, and I'm sure other women can attest to this as well, but there was just something about watching on TV and it sets the course of your life. At least for me, it did. Well, I would assume it's really giving you an inspiration that really that, motivate you your word, entire life. Yes. Yeah. Literally, it inspired me. And now, too, that thing, that's why I, I competed in the USA system because that was the first pageant I ever wa- like I watched. And I think that was just an ultimate goal. Like I knew I always wanted to compete in the USA system. Like there was no brainer. I mean, I, I assume it's the same way for, for professional athletes. You know, they want to play in the major leagues. They want to play for the NFL. Exactly. Like watching the Olympics on TV, you know, it's the same thing. Um, so I, I might be wrong about this, but you grew up in New York. Is that correct? Yes. I'm a born and raised Brooklyn, New York girl. Oh, awesome. So what's the demographic when it comes to um, New York? Is New York a very pageant um, landscape? Like, do people really attend, <clears throat> attend oh, it yeah. or or is it? Or is it just something that people do for fun? I know that the USA pageant gets a lot of contestants, but like I know in South Carolina, people like it's like a it's like people are bred to to win those type types of competition. Oh, uh, well, New York is definitely a big pageant state. I'd say along the New England like Northeast, New York is huge. I remember. So I actually didn't, I started pageant when I was 10, but I didn't actually win my first pageant until I was 16. And I was the National American Miss New York Junior Team in 2011. So actually 10 years ago. But that pageant, I competed against 182 girls. And I know that the New York USA pageant is at least around the same, like 180 something, 200 women competing. So I mean, New York is huge for pageantry. And we produce some really strong contenders. I mean, Andrea Gibral, for example, she's she's a great pa- example of a strong pageant competitor among other people as well. So you were saying it was two thousand six. So two thousand eleven. Well, no, no, the the year that you watched that um, the first uh, Miss USA. So it only yes. took you five years to win your title. So that's pretty quick, you know, to go yeah. from like well, no yeah. experience to um, to achieving that, and then like you're saying to have to sit there and compete with such a large field, did that make you feel so, like, incredible? Like, did you feel like you were on top of the world? Like, For sure. Um, Because winning, when you're the, the sole winner of a massive pageant, and not only that, but I actually didn't have a coach. I didn't start get, I didn't start with a coach until maybe I was, 19, 18, that's when I decided to invest in a coach. So I'm, I was a self-taught queen. I was on the YouTube game. My mom and I were practicing my introductions, my speeches. I was pra- I was recording myself. So, I mean, I, I primarily, like, I, I was very, I was very adamant about what I wanted and I did exactly what I thought I needed to do. 
And then, so I didn't use any outside help. So I think that's why it made the win so much more bittersweet because I knew that I worked so hard on my own for this title. So for your listeners out there that look up to you and just people that are curious on what it takes to be a winner, do you think that for pageantry that for a while you can just do that research on YouTube? Do you think that the, or do those researches by searching on the internet and trying to understand the skills that you need to achieve? Or do you think that it's worth even when you're at the beginning to spend that money to work with an expert that has a uh, amount of winners around it? already shown that they've won because right now I know that you're with one of the biggest um, pageant coaching I mean they have a note winners over and over and over so there's right. a reason why you're with with that team but do you think there's also a benefit to just doing your own research yourself I agree um, well I do think there is a benefit to doing your research yourself. I think you really hone in on your craft. You know your strengths and weaknesses. And you really develop your own your own style, I guess. And I feel like sometimes that may be lost, depending on the coach you work with. Or maybe sometimes people rely too much on a coach. That's why I thought it was, even though I have nothing against coaches, I believe if you want to invest in a coach, do it. But for me, when I was competing, I knew that I wanted to be 110% myself. And I also, at the time, I was, I was young. I, my family and I didn't see the... At the time, we didn't see the need to invest in a coach financially. We were like, we know we've been doing the pageant for a while. So the year I won was the fourth year I won. So it was the fourth year I competed was the year I won. So at that point, we had already we already knew kind of what it took. We invested where we felt we should invest. So I mean, in a sense, just by the repetition of doing that same pageant over and over again, we we felt comfortable enough to just go about it on our own. But I feel like if you are entering a new pageant or if you're entering, if you're out of your element or if you don't feel comfortable, that's what a coach can give you. They can give you security. They can really, they can really tell you a lot about the system. They can help you figure out what style works for you that maybe you may not be able to find on your own. Like, for example, when I competed in the USA system, it was my very first time, but I felt the need to invest in a coach because I knew that I had, I wanted to come in, hit the ground running, and I knew I wanted to be strong. So that's why I invested in a coach because I knew that that was important to me to make sure that I put my best foot for it. Do you think it's like uh, buying a car and then having a great um, auto mechanic and having a great team to change the oil, work on the on the uh, the the sparks, working on the gear shift, working on the wheels, working on the uh, the transmission is is that is that a good way of describing it? I mean, I don't um, know if a lot of our our listeners understand say, the, the the car analogy, but I'm just like giving that kind of you know because hair and makeup and like understanding the dress you need to wear. Gotcha. No, I mean I okay, so I'm actually terrible with cars, so but I, I think I get what you're saying. I think having a team is important, but I feel like don't make your team too big. Don't have too many voices in your ear. I feel having one or two trusted confidants who know you and your style and they also know your platform and your purpose is incredibly important because those people were really, they'll give you that second opinion that you're looking for. But at the, at the core of it all, you should really know yourself. And I feel that if you don't know yourself, then a pageant along the journey will be a great learning lesson for you to really figure out what you want, but I feel you don't need 10,000 different coaches for, for each thing. I mean, I, when I invested, I invested in a nutritionist and a trainer and I had a, someone I work with for a walking lessons because I mean, there's just something about you know, that sexy walk that everyone wants to perfect. You know, if we could all do the, the, the lava walk, you know, we'd all be Queens with crowns on our head, but we all can't do it, you know? So we have to get the help where we feel necessary. But I mean, I think it's important to invest, but don't overinvest. If you don't need to, don't do it. Like if you know that you have a journalism degree like I do and you work in media and you're a, a solid communicator and you interview people on a daily basis, you don't need to invest in an interview coach that, you know, will charge you like exorbitant amounts of money. I'm like, you can just do one, two, I'm mean, not one or two, um, do a, like maybe a small package, maybe four lessons. And that's enough for you to figure out what you need to do and then and do a lot of mock interviews. And that's my two cents. 
hands on that. No, I think that's a, I think the listeners out there, and I think that your perspective is so important. I mean, you've spent your life going to college and getting, getting a degree and you're working in media. So I think that the knowledge and the opinion you have is very valuable. So, I mean, Thank I, you. I think that if people don't take your advice seriously, I don't think they're giving you an opportunity to show how valuable you are in the, the, the media, um, spare you know because uh it's so important to be able to communicate so well in so many forms written spoken you know um definitely absolutely so i I, i'm just curious on how you felt on winning a title in four years in the dynamic of new york with it being so competitive did you feel that that was quick did you feel that that was the natural progression did you feel that that you could have won it a year earlier? Looking back, I don't know. Like sometimes we put things in, like we we put we closed that we won it. Like so sometimes people don't remember it so uh, fondly because sometimes our listeners, um, I always get questions like, well, you know, if I start doing a pageant, you know, how long could you know how long could I compete? How much money would I have to put into eventually win do you think your time frame to win your first title was quick or or no i think it was the natural progression for sure uh every pageant that i competed in so i my that i first competed in national american miss in 2007 and i only made but i learned so much from because i did my first pageant i was 10 and i remember i cried for two weeks didn't come home with anything i was my mom was like okay, Gina, I will let you do another pageant if you stop crying. And I stopped crying and I worked hard. And I remember I, I decided to compete in NAM when I was 12 and I got top 30 and I think I won a spokesmodel trophy like, and that was about it. And the next year I came back and I actually got second runner up. And then I went to nationals, didn't place in nationals, but learning from that experience. The next year I came back, I was a junior teen at this point, so I could wear makeup and I, and I felt like I was a bit more experienced and I got fourth runner up. And then... The following year after that, I knew that year, I was the most prepared I had ever been. Every single pageant, I feel, you take something from and you learn even more about yourself and you learn what styles look good on you, what, what, what suits look what good on you. You know you know yourself. So when I came that year, I knew exactly what I wanted to wear. When I went shopping, I was like, I want this gown. When I had the earrings, I had this gown. I was like, I want to do this with my hair. So that year, I feel, was the perfect moment for me to win. When I walked into that pageant, I went in saying, I'm going to win. And I had never felt that any other pageant because I knew that at that moment that I was the prepared and the best version of myself, not only physically, like I had the outfits and I, and I, but I remember I felt confident. I felt like I was the emotionally best version of myself. I felt like I could be an example. I felt like I could represent the state of New York. I felt that I really felt like the queen that year. And not only did I win the title, but I mean, I won every optional. I remember I won the spokesmodel category, which is really important to me because I love public speaking. So knowing that my, like, I won something just for my voice and my message was really important to me too. So I think it's incredibly important. I mean, if you can win on your first try, amazing. That means that you were true to yourself, you know yourself, and you are really well prepared. But if you don't, there's nothing nothing wrong with that just learn from that pageant experience and then take it with you for the next one and you'll in my opinion you'll definitely do better well for our listeners out there to sweep the boards with igm that's a huge achievement because they have seven different categories right that you can compete in over the well that pageant was national american oh national uh, okay yes but But i actually did compete in igm okay i'm just so i got the wrong pageant but they still have like seven categories right Yes. And you swept and you swept that week. That's a huge achievement. I mean, that's that that's something not to gloss over. That means that they really felt that you were the most rounded candidate. I mean, that's got to be 100 percent flattering and just 100 percent ego like sharpening. Like, did you feel that like that you when you won that that was like this is something I can definitely do the rest of my life. Like I. I don't know how yeah. to describe that because no, it was it was an amazing feeling. I think because you you many if you compete in patterns, you know pre, like the girl who takes they usually do, they almost always do optionals first. So the girl who takes home the most awards, 
usually you, they already start picking them out as a top contender or top five or even the winner. So for that, I already was like, oh my gosh, wow, like that, like I'm, I pe- I'm doing really well. Like this is amazing. Like, and I had never even won a pageant at this point, so I was already excited. I'm like, I'm winning these optionals. Like I feel great. Like I felt amazing. But when I tell you that feeling of of winning the pageant, it wasn't even the the, the having the crown on my head, but it was just the moment of like your hard work for years finally came to fruition. And I I had the ugliest cry. Um, if you want the video, it's on YouTube, everybody. But I had the ugliest <laughs> cry. Um, it's always I, good. It's always good. I was disgusting. Miracles happen was playing. Um, it was the the snot was coming out. I mean. When I tell you, um, a funny story, uh, my mom actually, she told me that she had a, a dream that I won the pageant, So, but she couldn't watch it. My mom can't watch the pageants. It's weird. So she's always like r- hanging out in the lobby or something. But, the, so, but, but for this really? pageant... Really? So she's yeah. is she that just so... Um, she gets anxious. She, get, oh. she gets really anxious. So she, for, and and are, you, like, are you completely the opposite? Do you take that and you make it into fire? Like, are you... Do you, are are you complete opposite to your mom? Like, are you? Do you not? Yeah, are you mom, fearless? My mom is very introverted. She's she's quiet. She's nice. You know, she sits there. But for pageants, like she, she will she will get in there when she needs to. Like for she's like, okay, Gina, we're doing interview prep. She's like, let me look at your outfits. She's she's a pageant mom, not in the sense of do this, do that. But like, she knows how passionate I am. So she supports me. She's like, okay, you want a second opinion? Let's do this. She's like, you need, you, she's like, you can't go get something altered. I'll go do it for you. Like, so she's, she's like my right hand, my go-to, you know, my, my partner in crime for pageants, but it's, it's hilarious. And I don't get offended. Like when my mom is, my mom will buy a ticket for herself. Like she'll be at the pageant, but she can't physically like sit through it because of the anxiety. She's just like, I can't do this. She's like, I don't know. She's She's like, I can't. So she'll just walk out. And I don't blame her. I mean, like, you know, like she she's you are the best representation of her. So like she, you know, I I would get so nervous if I had a kid and like they're on stage, you know, because everything that I've worked up to is in you. I I mean, I don't know if that's too much pressure, but that's kind of what I, I assume she feels like. Yeah, no, she she calls me her pride and joy. That's our little um, a little thing. But we have these these little things that are just for us. That especially for pageants, like we have these little mother daughter things. And I think they that's part of the reason she's part of the pageant process in that sense. Like I can't, I personally feel I can't do a pageant without her. Even if though like she needs to be there. Like, like, I I think one time I did a pageant without her because she just had to work and it was just a one day pageant. But I, I, but I, I think I just, I won that pageant, but I didn't feel complete of not like not having my mom there. It was just, it, it, it's, she's just really part of the integral process. It's, it's like not having the right shoes on you. You win. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Like I have flown my mom out. I'm like, mom, you will be there. Well, you, <laughs> like, mom, I will pay for your, t- your train. Well, ticket, then your now it's ticket. more like a lucky charm then. So yes, that's literally what she is. I, I do apologize for our listeners and well as our lovely guest. I was looking at her feed on her Instagram and my my uh my feed for some reason wasn't muted when it comes to and I looked up um one of your videos of your walking demonstration and it was playing music. So I you're in this deep conversation about your mom and I'm like, Oh god, oh no, like it just started playing. <laughs> no problem. So um so you finished that year. Um, what's the transition? Because eventually you do come to the DMV area. Do you yes. do you spend any other time competing in New York, or what's that transition like? So, I assume yes. that you, I assume you spent high school up to high school in New York. Did, did you also go to college in New York at that point? And then no, no. Um. So I went to George Mason University in Fairfax, Virginia. Okay, so that's how you so get to the DMV I, area. Yeah. So um, I won the Royal International Miss New York team title after my National American Miss title. And then um, did that. And the, But then when I went to um, Virginia, I competed in International Junior Miss. And I won the Virginia team title. And then I actually, when I went to IGM Nationals, I got second runner up in the world for, for international junior miss. Wow. And, and I, and I, mean, that, I mean, that, wow. Second in the world. I, wow. Yeah. 
yeah, it was amazing. It was a great experience because not only did I play second runner up, but I also won spokes model. I won casual wear modeling. And then there was, I believe there was another category I won, but it was, but it was really cool. It was a really great experience. And of course, like clockwork, had my mom there and she was doing so the whole. I want to ask you, I, 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 I want to ask you this question. So is it harder to be there in that smaller group or is it, or is it harder to just be on the top 15 and, and be in that mix or what's your feeling? Cause you, you've been first runner up, you, you've been in the top three, you just said, and I mean, and that opportunity was for a world title. So how does that, how do you co-sign that? I believe, um, depends on the patent system, but for me personally, I would just say that I feel like it's always tougher to be in the top five because I, there, I'm sure the, the scores are very similar. Like the votes, the judges are probably, there's going to be like a little thing that separates each young girl, each woman. So um, I feel it's so much tougher because what one judge may like, another judge may hate. And that may be the difference between Sacramento up and Queen. So, so I, I think it's so much, it's so much more difficult that way. Okay. You, okay. Yeah. Go ahead. So sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, I was, no. That, that was all I was saying. <laughs> oh, okay. So I have a question about the judges because this is also a controversial question. I was just curious on how, do you think that the judges should be uh, specifically from your industry? And do you think they should be ginger, uh, gender neutral? It looks like, USA is going to majority only women for the national competition. Do you think that's better? Or do you think um, just having people of all genders, but they have to be in your, they have to be either in modeling, they have to be a clothing designer in your uh, sector to be best judge, like no professional athletes, you know, no, like just random celebrities. Do you think that's the best? What What's your philosophy? What do you think is the best way to I, judge a pageant? I would say no random celebrities. I But I believe that having people geared to specific industries is important. And I actually don't, I don't see a, a, a problem with having, um, uh, having like, multiple genders, um, multiple well, male, female, and then, you know, wh cis, whoever you identify with. But, mm -hmm. I I believe that I I don't believe I mean I there are there are male like pageant like pageant coaches there are people who are in the industry who like if uh, like I tell you there are or I'll go to a dress store and there will be a man who will tell me specifically what I need and what color I need and this and that and I and I and I just take it because they're knowledgeable in the fields and I think that's really important. So you don't that, you don't find that as being insulting because no okay, okay good. No, I believe if you are qualified, then regardless of 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 your your gender, you you are you should be a judge. I, uh, and also, a judge, not to cut you off, but I no. think that in fitness as well, that's another thing I've noticed that there will be male judges, so maybe a fitness trainer. And I think that is something that is also another topic because they'll sometimes they'll invite like a random fitness trainer, but you'll and every every person's body is different. But there will be some people who are specifically there. They maybe work towards bodybuilding or they may, maybe mm -hmm. work towards more of like a model or, or a lean body type. So I think that's something that is, should be really taken into account. You can't just invite anyone from the fitness industry for a pageant. I mean, I think those are all extremely so important. Um, I was just so concerned that there's an emphasis to push men out of the equation when um, a lot of men – are, are, are really your biggest, you know, supporter, you know, I mean, women's 100% are your, are, are your top supporter, but like men are also there, you know, like, I, I guess I always take the philosophy, 99% of people are good. And just because there are a couple of bad at apples, you know, um, we should, you know, we should also, um, want, want other people. So I was, I was curious because it I hope we, I hope we have a more diverse, but your opinion on the, on the fitness is so correct in my opinion, because, um, 
a bodybuilder trainer is such a inappropriate person because if they're looking for like more of a sculpting body and then the pageant is going to be more lean, but like a, a great stomach, you know, and, and right. long legs, they may not have, know how to judge that. So I, I, I think that's a great perspective. So. No, I mean, that's great. I think, and I really do value all opinions and, and, and people who are interested in pageantry. I think the more the merrier, I think pageants have, they've really impacted people's lives. What it rather, I mean, primarily positive, but I mean, pageants are here to stay, I think. I don't think pads are going away. I think they're changing for sure, but I think pageants are always going to be here. Oh, so you do, so you feel from an internal, from, from competing, you, you feel that they are changing, they're, they are changing? Yeah, I mean, I mean, look at the Miss America system for one example. I mean, that pageant has changed and, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, change with the times and patents are always going to change and involve with what's going on in the world. I just think it's really important at the end of the day that we keep the, the, the message and the medium behind the organization. And the whole point of pageantry is to motivate women. And it's supposed to be in, inspirational and to really highlight the achievements and talents of women and also other pageants for men too. So, I mean, I have a friend who's competing in Mr. Supranational. So... So, I mean, but there's a reason why pageants are, are so popular. What What's the key factor for you? Do you do it because it's a sport and you want to achieve the highest competition and, and, and better yourself and give you a goal to achieve? Or do you do it simply because it's something to achieve and it's fun? I would definitely say I don't compete for the crown. I, I truly, I mean, if I competed for the crown, I wouldn't be coming back <laughs> you know, repeatedly for different systems. Right. Uh, I, I, for me, I genuinely, I feel great. Like in a way it's so motivating for me. I love working for a pageant. I love being focused. I, I love it. It's for me, it is a, a sport. I call it a sport. It's my sport. I'm not a, a real, like, you know, physical athlete, but I call it maybe a mental sport. It's, it's a mental game. And, and I just feel so confident and proud of myself whenever I compete because I know that I worked my hardest. And it's kind of like a high in a way. And, and it, honestly, it's really good for my mental health. I know some people think patterns can really make them, you know, not, not feel the best so they can really make them feel, you know, insecure, but it's the opposite for me. I feel my most confident when I'm preparing for a pageant because in my mind, I'm like, I can, I can do anything. I can accomplish anything. I'm confident in X, Y, Z. I work with X, Y, Z organization. And I know that I'm, I, when I compete, I, I work to be the best version of myself. I feel like the best version of myself when I'm preparing for a pageant. Well, I 100% agree with the notion that it's a sport because if you call tennis a sport, golf a sport, then pageantry is a sport. So, sure. I mean, that all of those you have to work out, you have to be in great shape, you have to compete at a high level. Definitely. Pageantry is a sport. I mean, yes, there are multiple levels of competition as well. I just wanted to take one second from this great interview and talk about our sponsor of the week, Mid-Atlantic Video and Photography Productions. No matter if you're planning a wedding, a special event, or you just need an amazing headshot, they are the team to get the job done. You can reach out to them at 443-422-3830. Again, that's 443-422-3830. Or you can go just go right to their website at mavpp.com. Now let's get right back to the show and listen to this great interview. So you transfer down to uh, D.C., go to college, and then you compete several times um, getting like within – like uh, how I guess arm's length of a na- of a world title, which is and congratulations on getting a national title. You know, I mean that's a, um, but like to to get a world title that that's awesome. Um, well, well, I didn't really get a national title. I, I I'm sorry, you 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 were representing the United States, right? 
No. no. Um, so International Junior Miss, um, so sometimes you can have other countries participate. So I was representing the state of Virginia. But there, but oh. so, but well, that's still but, cool. But you still got to compete. I mean, at, yeah, when you're right. on st- when you're on stage, it's just like uh, when you're when you're in the tournament. It doesn't matter where they they seated you. It's just about how you end it. So at the end of the day, you you ended up being right there at, at the end. So yeah, I mean that so that great. that's the most important thing in my opinion. So I don't really, I don't care if you were seated zero or you were seated number one. So, um. So what's the big transition? Do you just felt that you came of age, like like the actual number? Like, did you feel that you mentally were ready to finally start competing in USA? Because it sounds like everything's leading up to USA. Yeah. You, you're, you're going back to that, you know, you uh, it made a huge indelible mark on your brain that you know the exact year and you know the girl who won okay so you you know that point you said 2006 boom yeah okay so what's the year that you say okay i'm ready i know that i'm the right age i'm i I looked i have my i have my style i know i'm confident woman how do you describe that is there a way to describe it because everyone is different like how do you how do you co- if, if there's a coefficient, like they say in math, this is like the, this is the, the bellodrome of it. And, and this is the beginning of everything. So is there any way to describe that? Yeah. I mean, so after, um, I competed at IJM, I actually took a really long sabbatical. It took a four year sabbatical. So I did my, my last pageant before USA was my freshman year of college. And then after that, I thought it was really important to focus on my academics and my studies. And I immersed myself in the college experience, and I really enjoyed it. So once I graduated, though, I knew I wanted to get back into pageantry. I got a great job working in D.C. at a production company for international media companies. So I was able to travel for them. And it, and it really made me very confident in my public speaking skills. And I honestly was just, I was overall very happy and confident in myself. I was working with the National Alliance for mental illness on a um on a volunteer basis and I so I knew exactly what I wanted to focus on and I knew that I had a message and a purpose and I wanted to take that to the USA stage so I decided I'd say maybe January I would say honestly maybe even like a cup maybe I'd say like fall 2017 I, I was thinking about competing in the USA system and November 2017 that was when Ashley Volrath um one miss virginia usa that year and she and i we'd briefly been connected through some modeling jobs in the past but i actually got the opportunity to interview her in january 2018 for a work assignment and it was really great to connect with her and i was asking her about her pageant journey and i just kind of connected with her follow afterwards and i was asking her questions about the pageant how she went about it and she was just saying you should just really try it you should do it so that was already in my mind and then so I remember I started working out and I was getting my my health and fitness right and I just started but I didn't actually officially decide I wanted to compete I'd say until May 2018 so I contacted um a pageant coach I was working with Ariel um Sage who is so that's her Instagram name and she was the 2014 Miss Virginia USA and she was so helpful and she was helping me with all areas of competition and she was helping me with um with and so I just met up with her in June and 2018 and we just discussed in person about the pageant she gave me tips and then I just I announced in August 2018 that I was competing and I prepped with PR pageant coaches and I, and I was literally, I worked my hardest I've ever worked. I remember I was in the gym two times a day. I was prepping my, my bio. I was doing every, like, I lived, breathed the pageant because I knew that when I w- was competing, I wanted to be on my best foot forward. I wanted to be the best version of myself inside and out. And I'm grateful that my very first time competing in the USA system in November 2018, I got first runner up for Miss Virginia USA. <laughs> And Which I is a huge that. achievement. I mean, like yes. we should not over, 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 um, like gloss over that in any way because, um, it's your, it's really your first for 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 a in what I would say the pageant. Yeah. So in the pageant, okay, in the state that you represent, 
you got first runner up. So, like, the, con- congratulations on that. Like, I, was, I, I would I'm like very proud of myself. Yeah, I mean, you, 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 I mean, you did an excellent job of documenting that year, and I think it truly demonstrates the amount of work you did in the in meal planning and working out and buying the right outfits. I mean, people do not understand the the amount of intelligence it takes to achieve what you did. So, I mean, that's really important to, to just, to, I mean, is, is that how you feel? Like, no, that's, that's definitely how I feel. Um, I mean, I was utilizing social media so much more that year. So I, I prepared for about a year, but I know I did chronicle all of it. I mean, I even have like highlights on my story, um, on my Instagram dedicated to it because I not only wanted to just promote the pageant system, which I think is really important when you're, when you're competing for a pageant, you should really be promoting the pageant as well, because when you are the title holder, that is going to be your job. So I wanted to get a head start on that, but I also felt it was important to chronicle my journey in a way just so people can see how, how, I want to see how hard it is and how, and how much time and dedication it takes so that people know that it's not easy, but it's, it's fun and it's worthwhile and it's liberating. But, but I also wanted to inspire people and say, this is my journey. This is where I came from. This is how I transformed my body. This is what I ate. This is what I do on a daily basis. This is how I prepared for my pageant. And if it could motivate someone else, that was really the whole goal of how I was chronicling my year. So, I mean, how, how, how's the last, I, it, it's crazy because we lost a year, really. How yeah. do you, how do you, how, how are you like coming to grips with like the last three years? Because normally a lot of times if you're in that position, you're going to be right in the mix the following year. And then, you know, if it just happens to not be your year that year, you're probably going to win two years out. It's just like, it's yeah. you're, you're in that mix. So like, in my opinion, the year that you probably could have won, if there was a, a real open, I, did they do a virtual pageant? How did they do to t- last year? Because like, it just seems like last year was such a mix. So, and in going into this year, um, is it going to be virtual? Is it, or is it going to be a real stage? Like, like, yes. like so, so actually really, really interesting because of the pandemic, the Miss Virginia pageant was pushed all the way to the summer. So that, so that was, so they didn't actually have a 2020 pageant. I guess this is the 2020 pageant, but it's taking place in 2021. So I'm assuming that gives you less time to prepare for USA. Um, or, or USA will be pushed back and I, I don't really know, but yeah, so they actually didn't have a 2020 pageant, but the, the year after I competed and got first runner up, I did go back the following year and I only made top 15 and I'm not going to lie. It was a bit of a bummer, but I know that they were really qualified the top five deserved it. I mean, looking at them, I could just tell it was like that year, even though I thought I was my best, I'm like they came in with the A game, they came and they're actually funny. I mean, enough. A few of the girls that were top five that, that year were top 15 the year before. So they, they did what I did. You know, they learned from the year previously and they came back stronger and they made top five. So that's that was a natural progression. And sometimes sometimes it doesn't work out. And I think rejection is a part of life. And one thing I can say is really important, a takeaway from pageantry. It's, it teaches you so much about how to be resilient and how to handle rejection. So that year, I only made top 15, but I made great connections. I still keep in contact with a lot of young women. And then the pandemic hit, maybe two months later. So then that was the year where every, I mean, I'm sure everyone can relate to this. It was just a year of uncertainty. My mental health struggled. I wasn't sure about what was going on in life, in my career. Things were just so different. And that it was a really big eye-opening and learning lesson for me in that I knew what I wanted out of life. And I knew what I felt was really important to me. So that was the year I actually, even though I was like working with the National Alliance for Mental Illness and a couple of other mental health organizations and always promoted mental health on my social media, that was the year I really, 2020 was the year I really made my mental health a priority. And I was like, the world is a dumpster fire right now, but the only thing you can focus on is yourself and your happiness and your well-being. So I developed... I just developed these new mantras and way of life. So I'm actually really excited going into 2021 because I feel like I have 
such a better head on my shoulders that I, I, I don't know what's next to my pageant journey, or I'm not sure I can say, but all I can say is I feel very, very confident and ready to just to, sh- to share who I am now as a person. I'm, I'm about to turn 26. I feel like I'm not the same person I was when I was 22 preparing for Miss Virginia, USA. I feel like I have a life, I have a lifetime more of knowledge to share. And especially after coming out of a pandemic, I'm sure a lot of other people feel that way too. So, you know, I love doing follow-up questions. So let me get you <laughs> some follow-up questions. One, if you never achieve a title with USA, do you feel that getting that close is a is such a heartbreak or is that like so happy and you're happy to have that moment or um or you're you would still not be like you you couldn't be content for the rest of your life so like this you have like you have to like do everything to win like do you have that mentality do you feel you that stress Um, No, I'm actually, I was very happy with first runner up. I mean, my first time competing in the USA system, go in, get first runner up. I knew that I did my best. Like I knew I did my best. I was happy. So knowing that I placed that high first time and I know that I did my best, I'm, I'm truly happy. Like it's one of those moments in my life where I'm like, like, I, I was so happy. I mean, I was holding on to that gold star moment for like the next year. I was, I was so proud of myself. And that is something that not many people can say because they say when you're first runner up, it's because you always think about like, what if, what could I have done? And I guess in a way I did think about it, but in my mind, I was like, I, I, I was confident in myself. Like I, 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 I enjoyed the pageant experience. I enjoyed the pageant weekend after the pageant. I remember like I went to dinner with my family and we went to like Buffalo Wild Wings and I was, and we were all just laughing and joking, eating, eating like chicken wings and French fries. I mean, it was, I, I really, I felt like I won, honestly, like afterwards, it was just a massive, it was a massive party, just uh, just so happy about my achievement for the pageant. So even if I don't win um, a state title with USA, all I know is that like, that was a blessing in itself. Like God blessed me with that moment and I'm so grateful for it. So from eligibility, is this your last year or you have one more year? Um, I have two years left, I believe. In, so uh, maybe, this year, this year and next year. <laughs> um. So I think the you have to be twenty seven, and I think you have to, you can't be no older um, than twenty eight to compete at the USA pageant. So I believe this year, I think it says like January first. Tw- you have to be younger than twenty five. So I'm grateful that I'm actually a summer baby. So the way eligibility lines up is, I can s- technically I could still compete at USA if I was twenty eight. Yes. I believe. Yeah, so, I think that is. So I can have some time, and I'm 25 now. But so. the, the but the problem is we don't know when USA is going to be because there's a rumor that it could be now in November for the national pageant, or it could go back to being the summer pa- You know, in in the middle. Right. So it's all up in the air. So is that concerning to you, or are you just like you're going to put it up to God and just like it is what it is. Yeah, I'm going with it like it is what it is. I mean, God gave us a pandemic, so he'll, he'll figure it out along the way. I mean, all well, you, do you do is just... Do you think because you were saying that you were really having a mental struggle, and I, I mean, a lot of people were going through it. Do you think that that you had to go through that 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 fog, that um, mystery, that mystery woods, um, you know, the to get through the to the meadow of green and grass? And do you feel like you're so much more powerful now that like you can give that perspective as well. Absolutely. I feel that God gives his toughest challenges to his biggest warriors or, or some, or something along those lines, but I, or to his toughest challenges to his strongest warriors. But I feel that I needed that. I needed that because after competing in USA and I got first runner up, I, my life was on a high. I was, I, could, I was doing commercials. I was in the acting industry. I was doing some modeling work. My life was really picking up. And then the pandemic, I feel, was a test in humility. I believe that there, there was a period where I wasn't getting any work. And I, I was struggling with the, the job that I had. And then I lost my job. And then I got the job again. And, and, I mean, it was a struggle. And I think that's important is that you need these lessons 
so that they can really make you who you are and you can learn from them and you can become a stronger person inside it out. And I think it took me a while to kind of just figure out what I want to give to the world, what my purpose is. And I truly feel now that my purpose, I do believe part of my purpose is my voice. And that's why I love working in media and I love being a spokesmodel. And regardless of I can be in a pageant or not, I feel like I've found my purpose and who I want to be as a person. And if I get to share that on the Miss USA stage, that would be amazing. But if I don't, at least I know that I have a platform through my social media and through the, the work that I do. I just wanted to take one extra second and talk about our sponsor of the week, Mid-Atlantic Video and Photography Production. No matter if you're planning a wedding and you need a wedding videographer, you're doing a music video, or you're doing commercial, they are the team to get the job done. You can reach out to them at 443-422-3830. Again, that's 443-422-3830. Or you can go right to their website at MAV. PP.com. Now let's get right back to this great interview. Well, you were mentioning something that just completely popped into my brain because it was like, I mean, this is this panic, this uh, pandemic year and a half has just been totally life changing, but it was just literally less than like 11 or 12 months ago, but you were a arm guard on the wrestling show raw to to uh to uh, protect some wrestlers and i i thought that was so cool and uh um did you did you ever like were, were you just applying for jobs for that like or i mean you said you were doing acting jobs that it just come come about like that's so cool no i actually so i have a manager um and so that was just, it was just a casting that I got and I went in for it and I was booked for it. So I was just an extra, but it was hilarious because I didn't really know what the job entails. They're just like, it's WWE, like just, just go in. Like, um, I was like, okay, like it's a quick job. Like I'm, I'm available that day. Went in, I didn't know the extent, like I was talking to Triple H, like Vince McMahon yelled at me because he didn't think I was paying attention to the instructions. I was hanging out with Ronda Rousey. Wow, you, Vince and, McMahon and Vince personally like, yelled at you? Yes, that's so Yeah, I mean, please <laughs> yell at me, please. Dude, I mean, you don't know how many people want to be yelled at by Vince McMahon. You just like, yeah. that's a check mark like on life. <laughs> you should totally put that. Triple H was like, she does not look like a security guard. Like how did you get cast? And I was like, you tell me Triple H, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you, you very, I mean, as a guy, you're very, very beautiful. Like, so like when you came down the aisle, I'm like, oh, it's one of my pageant friends. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, okay, let's see what she can do. Yeah. <laughs> like, I please don't do hurt her, video. please. I didn't do much. I was just, I, my job was, I played head guard. So my job, so the other guys were actually manhandling. Um, and I was just directing them. I was like, go this way, go that way do this. I was like opening the doors. I was like slamming doors. I was like, get in. Like, I like, I was just playing like the, the head cop, which is fine. I, Cause I was just like, I don't want to get in the scuffle. Like some of the guys actually got pretty hurt. Like, um, like some guys had injuries. Uh, I remember McRonda Rousey at one point, hilarious. Like, I think like she accidentally kicked a guy and she was like, oh my. after we were done filming, she was like, I'm so sorry. Are you okay? Do you need anything? And he's like, no, I'm fine. So she's, she's really nice. I mean, for people that didn't see this whole skit, they throw them into a a vehicle and then they bat they uh, bash out windows in this vehicle, and it's like really violently. Like they're like, I'm not surprised that people got hurt. I mean, when you, I totally was like kind of like fuzzy on the entire. I remember you coming down the aisle, but now we're totally remember. They throw them into this cop car and they bashed out. They even put. They took us out of the, uh, as a wrestling fan, they took us out of the whole uh, scenario because they put cameras into the cop car. So, right. like, that was like, oh, such a goof. Like, like when would you have time to put cameras in the cop car? Like, <laughs> like it was it was hilarious. But actually, it was funny. Even, like, um, I believe Becky Lynch even got, like, a cut on her leg, too. Like, it was, it was, it was pretty dangerous. Yeah. So, I mean, that's just the, I mean, and. Do you feel that's all because, I mean, you, you have an agent. So is that all going back to 
that year of prep and, and all of that and what you've led up to? I mean, cause it, I would assume that they, that's how they came about to, to know more about you. So one thing that, um, and I believe this is actually incredibly important and I want everyone to know this is that I feel pageants, they are a stepping stone, but don't make it your whole life. So for me, I felt so confident and, and I, I felt so proud of myself that I actually took time out and I left my position at a media company to pursue my passions. I took my savings and I said, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to jump and wherever I fall, I fall. And it was a really successful year for me. I was doing all of this work and I was really happy. And yeah, maybe I wasn't making as much money, but I felt that I was happy. Just, I, I took a chance. And I think that's what I really want people to know is that take a chance, take a chance in whatever you want to do. I mean, one of my favorite songs that I listened to is free. And it's, and it's like, you're free to do what you want to do. Yeah. And I love that song because I, I just feel it's exactly how I feel about life. You can do whatever you want to do. You can pursue any passion you want to do. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, but don't, don't wait by just don't regret not doing it. So. I think that's an awesome mantra, you know, yeah. seriously, like, uh, I think people that feel that they're locked down and they have to you know, their dad is a doctor, so they have to be a doctor. I mean, right. that's, you know, being being in a family business is, is phenomenal. And, but to find your passion, you know, is so important. It definitely sounds like you found your passion. Do you, do you think that your passion is more to be in front of the camera or, or do you enjoy being behind the camera and being more in production? Honestly, both. So the work that I've done in the past has always been a little bit of both. So I know how to, I know how to do pre-production, post-production, and I love being an on-camera host, but mm, I just love communication in general. Like I love communicating with people. I love meeting people. I, I love being a part of the process. I love telling stories. And so that's why I think I like to call myself a storyteller because whether it be prints or in person or on camera, I enjoy telling stories. And that's really what I want to do. So in acting, you tell stories. Um, sometimes in modeling, you know, you tell you tell a story through the work that you're doing and, or through the collection. So I just think that in life, just you just don't hold yourself to one thing. I mean, you're still young. I'm only 25. So I have my entire life ahead of me. And I think that's something that people forget sometimes is, you, you're still young. Like, right after you graduate school, you don't have to figure out everything. I mean, it's, a, it's a great and amazing if you do and you're happy with the work you do and, and that works out for you. But if it doesn't, you'll find it. And that's something to always stay positive about. Do you think it's alarming when people are in that long-term relationship and they get married right out of high school or college with that high school or college person? Or do you think it's really good that you, you find that person like, um, later in life? Um, well, this is, this is a different question. Oh, I know. It's uh, just like, cause you were talking about the philosophy about like, cause it's like, it's the same, same thing with your mental thing. Like, would you, do you think it's better to, try and find something you love to do like job wise, like in high school. And then that's the only thing you focus on. Or do you think it's better to, to like find that passion and then cultivate it? Like if you know that you want to be a painter, do you, do you think it's good to be a, to take painting classes, but maybe also take, uh, clay classes like you know for like pottery and also take other things to add to it but not so focused it, right. it's just it's a it basically it goes back to pageantry is it's just another way of talking about it. so like you know do you like the idea that to be really focused like if you're gonna do dancing should you only do dance or should you only do pageantry you know is what's your philosophy on that do you think that's great to for someone to think of or do you think it, it it makes you it sound to me while i'm thinking about it the way you talk 
it sounds like you've become a very diverse person because you have so many options available to you. Right. So I was just curious on how you broke that down. Yes. So for me, I, for public speaking is a really common fear among people, but not for me. I love public speaking. I've been public speaking since I was a child. I did speech and debate in high school. I did little speaking competitions in my middle school. I, in the pageants, I always entered this, the public speaking spokes model category. I, don't, I just loved it. So that's why I really loved pageants, that they were giving me an opportunity to public speak. Like, I loved personal introduction. I love um, public speaking categories. I love interview because I love connecting with people and communication. So pageants were good for me in that aspect. So growing up, I immediately thought, I want to be a news anchor. That is specifically what I want to do. That is all, like, I just want to be a news anchor. And when I went to college, so everything I did leading up to college was news. I worked in the school news station in um, high school, middle school, and college. I did some on-camera work, and I even interned at a few news stations. And even now, I still do part-time work at news stations. But I realized that I didn't want to hold myself down to one thing, because I feel like at a very early age, maybe, well, not early, but I'd say when I was 20, 21, I started realizing that I had multiple passions that I wanted to cultivate. And I knew that I didn't, like, I knew I did not want that to go by. So that's when I started branching out a little bit more into the modeling and acting world, because I knew that's something I wanted to try. So I think recognize what you want to do. But if you have something you're interested in, I'm full force believe that you should go after it. And, but you should also have a stable career or, or a background plan. I think that's super important. But I believe you're passionate about painting, for example, or, or pottery, work on it do it start start slow and then start building and building and building because you never know where that may take you that maybe might lead you to a more stable career than working as an engineer or a doctor or something and maybe that could be the, the thing that really is both your passion and can be your full-time career i'm a big believer in just do it go for it because <laughs> you know it most likely will work out in the end i mean you're the generation of that slogan, you know, the Nike slogan, just, just do it. So, I mean, right. I, 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 I'm sure that's also been indelibly, um, stained into your, your mantra as a generation. So, um, I, it sounds to me just to break it down. It sounds like you're definitely encouraging people to, to have that passion, but, um, to use that to your, to your advantage, like you have, like, you know, if you're, if you want to be in good public speaking, use that in the pageantry world. But then if the end goal is to be a news anchor, then not just focus and just only hang out with the people that want to be in the news department, you know, kind of be more diverse. I mean, that's how I heard it from you. Am I right? I mean, is that the way? Diversity makes you very lucrative. And I'm not talking about um, like background diversity. I'm talking about like experience diversity. Mm -hmm. Because when you go into an interview, I feel they're always going to ask you what you did or, or, and the, but I think it's important to have something different to bring to the table. Talk like I think it's important to have a diverse resume. I love having a diverse resume and it's great to have, but it also is really good to have one stable thing. Like I know if you've been working at the same company for 10 years and you, and you worked in different, um, different, um, roles within the company, then that's amazing. But I know that for me as a person, I love dipping my toes in different things. And I know that in the end, I know I have an end goal, like five, 10 year goals for myself. And I know how I want to get there. But in the meantime, I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take different routes to get there because at the end of the day I love networking and I love meeting people and uh, making connections is incredibly important to me and dabbing dabbling my toes in different things. So I was looking through your Instagram and I stumbled across that first pageant that you won, and in the class of sisters, I noticed that our current Miss Delaware um, was one of your your sisters in that pageant system. So does that give you even more, you know, strong feelings that you, this is your, this is what you should, you know, they, they knew that you guys were elite many years younger and that this is just a, this is a pre tell of like, this is what's going to come. And like your years, you know, this should be your year or the next year. Like this is what, this is your path. You just need to go grab it. Do you feel that way? Do you have any, like. 
I, I, it's, it's notions funny. about that? It's, it's funny because um, I like to think of, I, I do feel very positive. I'm not going to lie because I, the year I, I won my very first pageant, National American Miss, and I was 16, that was actually a hard year for myself as well. But I, I focused on the pageant and I just kept that as my main motivation and I won. So that's why I feel like sometimes when you finish out a dark period, God's just going to give you a blessing or just a cherry on top. So I do feel very positive about this year because I, I feel like good things are coming. You know, after, after after being in a pandemic for so long and an inconsistency, I think this year, 2021 and beyond, it is going to be a year of great experiences and opportunity for sure. So I do feel pretty positive about it. And also, and a side note, I think New York is does does produce a great gr- crop of young women. So it's so it's great that Katie was able to win Miss Delaware. Yeah, I mean, uh, I was I was just so um, I was excited to see the two of you there. It just to me it demonstrates that even then they recognize that you guys were the new batch of people and that you are eventually going to exceed up you know you're going to reach your goals like um you know you can always see a superstar like in like the the aspect of like a baseball player you know and to see them achieve their their place at the table is so awesome so i i really hope that that this year is the opportunity that you you get your you know, you get your jacket, as I as I say in golf, or you get your trophy, or you get your crown, as I say in pageantry. So, uh, it sounds like it's well overdue, um, and it definitely sounds like you put the effort and hard work in. And uh, thank you. I, I I hope this is the year. Thank you, thank you. Let Let's hope. Yeah. <laughs> um. I guess. Just to sum everything up, do you get really motivated by a big competition group? Because I would assume that people are dying to compete. So I would assume the field this year, and I know you haven't announced, but I'm just going to just hedge that you're going to to compete in either Virginia or D.C. Okay, and I assume that the field's going to be bigger and more diverse this year. Does that entice you? Does that get you more pumped up? Because it sounded like in the New York pageant that you were competing with so many people, it sounded like it motivated you. Does that personally motivate you? Well, I I still haven't decided if I'm competing, being very honest, but I, I do pay attention to pageantry, especially as now we've already been crowning a lot of our 2020, 2021 queens. So, I mean, it's interesting to see. And people are announcing that they're competing. And I do I do enjoy a challenge, though. Um, so for me, regardless, like I focus on myself and my preparation because every person is different. But I, I do enjoy I do enjoy seeing what other contestants are like. I do. I pay attention. Like, I'm not going to like I, I, I don't I don't fixate. That's not what I do. But I do pay attention. And I think that's that's really important to just to see what other, what other contestants are doing. And, and honestly, if they're doing an event, I'll support what they're doing. If they're fundraising, I'll support that. Because at the end of the day in pageantry, you, we should be nice to each other and we, we should be sisters to an extent. And I think that's, that's what, because pageants have given me some really great sisters and have really given me some great friends. So I think when you're competing with other young women in a pageant as big as the USA system, it's just important to support each other because there's already so much negativity and bad talk that just focus on yourself and your preparation, but also just be kind. Well, I mean, I think that if we could just promote the concept that you're competing against yourself and your biggest, your biggest opponent that can bring you down is yourself. And that if you listen to people being negative, if anybody would be negative, which we should definitely not promote, um, that no, you're feeding. Not. No, no, but I'm just saying you're feeding into that. Like the way to counteract that is you just, you don't pay attention to that. Like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not everyone wants to be your friend, but 99% of those girls that you compete against, I assume want to be your friend. I mean, I, every time all of my friends 
are on stage, they always talk about how they make all these friends. So like, right. Yeah. No, I, I think, I think you're really just competing against yourself. And I think that the stress that goes into that competition and those limited amount of days and all the weeks and months that you put into it, it's, it's gotta be devastating when you don't win, when you don't aren't the winner. So, I mean, um, it's not as devastating as you'd think when you, when I don't win, I know that I've taken something out of the experience. And one thing I do love too, is that I, I do actually, I do help people at the pageant. Like, um, if there's a girl, like I know when I was last night competing in Virginia, um, a young woman that was the first time ever in a pageant ever. So she was texting me for advice and I was helping her out and I was, she sent me pictures of her outfits. And normally they say, that's not what you should do. But I'm like, she doesn't have a coach. She doesn't have anyone. I don't mind assisting someone else. I think of it like kind of when you're on a plane, like you put your, your mask on first and your life vest on first and then you help the other person because at the end of the day, you're competing and you guys are technically still competition. But you but have you what the key, you have what the, the key thing in that you have compassion. And Thank it's you. so important that we, that we have compassion because it sounds like, it sounds like to me, which makes you very unique is that you'd be willing to finish for first runner up if, if it meant that it would be better suited. Like I, I just get this. Yeah. I, like if, if you knew that your year wasn't going to be as successful as hers and you wanted her, you wanted her, you wanted this, like, it sounds like you're about your state. Like you put, like, I, I love the Orioles. So I really don't care who plays on the team. I just want the Orioles and I want this, the state of Maryland to represent positively on a national standpoint. So, yeah. so I, I mean, that's so selfless. And I mean, it, I, if I was a judge, if, if you're saying that, I mean, I can't, I, there's no way I can't, I can't not vote for you. Like I have to vote for you. Like that sounds like some. That is such a, like, I so much, like, I I so much encourage you to express that in some way because, like, that's so important to me because it just shows that you're doing this to help the organization. You're, you're doing it for the right things. You're doing it for your, for your sponsorship. You know, it's so, that's so honorable. You're doing it all for the right thing. And then if you get, and if you, in the process, you get a little bit of notoriety and fame on it, that's great, but you're, you're doing such of the right things. So. Uh, Yeah. I mean, thank you for that. Yeah. Just, it's so important to just be kind in pageants and and it, and it's like, like you said, it doesn't matter to me at the end of the day. Like if I'm, if I'm the the winner, great. But I mean, if the girl who wins, um, you can tell she's a standout and she deserves it and she's so humble and, and just so worthy of the title, then I don't I don't care. I don't care. That's why when I won Virginia, when I didn't well, when I got first runner up in Virginia, I remember um I remember just being like I was like, I'm happy. Like I'm I'm cool with it. Like I'm great. That's why my family and I were like, let's go get wings at Buffalo Wild Wings and you know, celebrate. I mean I, 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 I love that philosophy. I mean I I I really I don't know how to say it, but, but saying, I wish, I wish you could bottle it up and, and really out and outsource it and like, and, and make it into a elixir or a pill that people can take because it's such a great outlook in life because I really feel that no matter what tragedy or what high you will have, you're always going to be a bubbly positive person and life is Thank so you. much so much easier to to live that way i mean is is that just the core philosophy am i missing something like did i did i not get because i i think that's no, that that's, i think that's what embody bodies you that really is me yes i try to find i mean i some, sometimes i can be negative and I, then i try to pull myself out of but it you're human being, so like yeah but I mean, for the most part, I really just try to be as positive as possible, especially in pageants, because pageants can, we all know pageants can get toxic sometimes. And so you just you surround yourself with positivity the entire weekend and you, and you have a positive journey to the pageant. And that, that's, that's the most important thing. 
And another thing I've noticed too is when they say don't share your clothes or or don't post your designers or whatever. I feel like everybody is different. So if someone wants to wear that red two piece and I'm wearing the red two piece, I know I will look different than she looks in the red two piece. And if I feel I look hot in the red two piece and she looks hot in the red two piece, amazing. But it, we're not going to look the same. You know, I think I think that what it is is that there's this mentality that unless you're getting paid by someone that um because in the old days that if you are if you are the model you're being paid by a designer and if you're not being paid by the designer to advertise it and you're just giving free credit but now that we're in this environment where no one gets paid the designer doesn't get paid the designer doesn't have money to pay you you can't you know you so i think it's only it's only helpful for you to like, yeah, I bought it at this dress shop and like th- Tony helped me and, and, and all that. I think I would, I really appreciate that's that. That's what I do. Yeah. And I think that's only helpful. Like, and I think your philosophy behind it, like, yeah, because also they might not wear the same color just because they have the same cut. The, the color is different. And, your your skin tone is totally different than other people's skin tone. So right. I, I'm really on your side on this because unfortunately we're not going back. You know, I, I would love as a photographer to know that, you know, I'm going to 100% at every job's coming in. I have to get a paying job, but like I, I'm not naive. I, I know the, the, what, what do they say? The horses left the barn, you know, you, right. you know, the pigs, left, you know, and it's, you can't put it back in, you know? So, um, I think, I think what you're doing is a good thing to help people as well as just a good mindset because you're being so positive about it. Yep. And it, honestly, it's what works for me. Um, and at the end of the day, that's really what's the most important thing. It's what works for me. And I think that that's, that's the most important thing that um, as long as it doesn't hurt other people and you're happy, then everyone else is just uh, smoke in the smoke in the wind or, or, or just like just like dust. So or 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 just chatter, you know, and you don't have to gotcha. listen to it. You don't have to listen to it. Well, I uh, I was extremely so interested in this conversation it's always great to get a really deep dive i think the field in virginia or dc should be really scared and (laughs) i know that uh you haven't made a decision but um i would say in my opinion that if you don't compete it's their loss and uh i think that you're fully prepared um from a mental mindset and uh you clearly crush your interview so the other things are just totally uh, up to you, and, and and it's really weird when it comes to COVID, like if you can go out and work out. And so, you know, if you if it's even possible, I I think you I think you're there. I mean, I I think you are, and uh, I think your your fellow uh, Delo- Delaware sister would uh, would love to have you on the team. So, it, it, I think it's only. It's only fitting. I think she's waiting for you to to go get your crown. So <laughs> let us hope. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show, and I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. This was such a great conversation, and thank you for letting me talk as much as I want. <laughs> no, I I sometimes I know I over talk, and uh, I just I think it's important to sometimes just let my let my guests talk as much as they want. So um, I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Najina, I'm just so impressed by you. I, um, I wish you only the best. It's clear through this lovely interview that you are 100% at the top of your game. And the skills that you've learned very short in life have put you in a position to be right at the center. And like I was 
trying to get you to say, but I guess you're too humble to say, is like all of your colleagues that you've already won with, you've already are there and uh, they're waiting for you. So I really hope that you take this opportunity and I hope you grab it. I know that's easier said than done, but I am so confident that if it's not this year, it will be next year that you get to have a, have a seat at the table. And um, I think it's only well-deserved. I think that you've aligned yourself with great friends and you've gone to the right college and you've put in so much hard work from a mental and physical and time and effort that this is the opportunity that you've been working for towards. And as a photographer, when you see someone getting that opportunity, no matter if it's in the front of a board, you know, at a company to, to achieve it or to win a pageant or for my actor friends to finally get signed to be on a show or for my professional athlete friends to win that drive, to drive in that winning run to, to finally achieve that goal. I'm so excited for you. And I, I truly hope that it comes sooner than later for you. I want to officially announce as well as congratulate my co-host, Ivan Carlos. Ivan Carlos is now officially going to be on a show produced by Warner Brothers, and it's going to be distributed on HBO Max, and I'm so excited for you. Um, I hope my listeners have already heard about this. As I'm sure you guys have kind of realized by listening to these episodes that we pre-record them very, very early. And sometimes they're about six months behind. But I am so, so excited for Ivan. And I'm so happy for him. And uh, personally, I'm extremely hum- humbled that uh, my photos had a small role in helping him get to the spot he well deserved earned and uh, I'm so proud of you and uh, I'm happy to say that at this point we are still going to be producing our show the movie breakdown so I hope you guys continue to stay tuned and continue listening to our show and As always, as I always thank my listeners, please like and subscribe. And as always, please stay 